Room to Rome, Chapter 11, Three Countries The car drove across the Czech-Austrian border without ceremony. Actually, we had crossed country borders without stopping at all. In the fog-heavy morning of mid-October, my driver, I say my driver because it was only he and I on the three-hour excursion, drove on through the damp countryside. The driver was an early 30s high school, or European equivalent, history teacher with a wife and small child. For the first hour of our trek to Vienna, we talked about our love of history, my education in biology, how close I had gotten to a family of my own, and why I was wandering around Europe instead of getting a good paying job. The conversation sweated to a halt once we met an impasse between the central theme of my adventure. It was too early to tell what it all really meant or why I had chosen to meander for such a long period of time without any real destination. And what was beginning to trend toward normality, I was in a new country in the early morning without a clue where to turn and relishing every second. Vienna is gigantic. Not only that, it is sprawling and there is so much to see with little distance to cover. Once my driver let me off on the sidewalk near the downtown area, I slowed on my heel, chose a direction which felt right and walked on. I soon found myself in the museum quarter and wandered. There was no real purpose to my walking except looking at old buildings with western tourists standing slack-jawed with 20-year-old headphones in their ears and socks pulled up a bit too high. Not liking the vibe, I turned and wandered in the opposite direction. Every once in a while I would run across an opulent cathedral. Next to it would be a large building which had the feel of importance, but since I had done none of my homework I had no idea. Towards the end of the day I found Schönbrunn Palace, a gorgeous baroque on the outskirts of the city. Standing behind the luxurious fountain overlooking the pruned trees, red rose bushes, and sprawling grounds, I began to think about my trip thus far. Aimless wandering used to be fun. It was an exhilarating rush to come across something I didn't know would be there. It was as if I was discovering something. Yet, Vienna was a turning point for me. No longer was it enough to happen upon a beautiful building, take it in, then move on. I felt myself wanting more. The coach bus drove along the motorway, underneath the legs of a UFO-shaped overpass, and down into the gutters of Bratislava, where the busload of young people unloaded, looking interested and a tad bit unnerved. Some of the group seemed to know where they were headed, so I followed them and we soon arrived at the base of a grand complex that was a Bratislava castle. The same feelings of awe came over me upon seeing the castle. It was huge with four gleaming white walls all coming together at their edges in fortified buttresses. I climbed the steep inclined ramps and was soon overlooking the city of Bratislava with its red roofs and intricate old town. After some photos, I descended from the castle and decided not to go immediately into the old town tourist district. Instead, I found myself walking amongst the everyday houses and people going about their business, visiting delis and talking with one another amongst drinks on the sidewalks. It acted as a reset button to get away from the tourist districts and see how the normal people live in different countries. At the end of the day, we were all the same, and essentially do the same things. It was a comforting notion, and I felt in some way like I was going about my normal business back home. Throughout Bratislava is a beautiful old town district jittered with lively bars and cathedrals, beamed with community art projects, and dance of the beat of street musicians. I indulged a bit in the nightlife before making my way to the hostel, getting a complimentary beer and finding the hostel bar. It was a Monday, so the bar wasn't busy, and I drank with the bartender and talked about my travels, and after a few drinks, we were deep into European politics and how easy it was for drugs across country borders. After two blonde Russian girls entered the bar, my drinking partner became preoccupied, so I went up to my room which I thought would be empty. Instead, a young guy around my age in full motorcycle gear with the face of a male model was dripping water on our floor talking to a Canadian girl sitting atop the bunk adjoining mine. We drank cheap beer and talked about how the Canadian girl was also solo tripping to Turkey and how the male model, who turned out to be a German living in Switzerland, was on a multi-country motorbike trip before he graduated college. We talked about our love of mountains, and the German told stories of how he and his college friends climbed often in the Alps, and he told me I had to try it sometime, especially if I was heading that direction, which I was, and to give him a call if I was ever in Switzerland and wanted to head to the top of the Alps. Amazing the people you meet when traveling. Morning came suddenly, and my head was pounding. The constant go of travel and the late nights of mixing drinks and greasy food started to take a toll on my body. Trying to be quiet, I left the German motorcyclist and the intrepid Canadian traveler and walked onto the damp cobblestone streets of Old Town Bratislava. I hunted down anything that seemed healthy, settling on a juice, tracked down the train station and bought a last-minute ticket to Budapest. Budapest is one of those cities I had always heard of but never had any ambition of actually visiting. 
On the train, I thought back to all the news I had been hearing about the refugee crisis and the stories of hordes of Syrian refugees camping out of the Budapest train station waiting, pleading to get away from their country's strifes and enter a land with better prospects. Upon arriving at said train station, there were no hordes of people looking desperate, but the normal mixture of travelers. Leaving the depot there was a small contingent of Red Cross volunteers, with the relief effort seemed much more controlled. The rains had followed me to Budapest, and with the night settling in, I had searched for my hostel. In the past, the search was never much more difficult than marking a pen on a map and walking towards it. This case was different, and after walking in circles for nearly an hour, and with my eyes welling up with frustrated tears, I walked into my hostel. A young man with white contacts to give the effects of no pupils and emo black hair helped me to my room where a young guy, my age, sat on his computer. The guy, James, and I hit it off instantly and talked incessantly about our travels. James was an Australian photographer who had decided to travel the world. He spent the night talking about all manner of things over cheap beer bought from the market below our hostel. The following morning, James and I decided we would explore the city together starting with a walking tour. The tour was great and we soon picked up a Brazilian girl, again our age, to join our cohort. Over the next several hours, we explored all Budapest had to offer from museums, the old town district, the waterfront, cathedrals, and finished atop the city at the Budapest castle. During our walking tour, our guide told us about this particular Hungarian liquor which he found in the heart of the tourist district. Shots turned into beers which turned into bar after bar. The night spiraled into a drunken stupor which ended back at our hostel with a group of people talking about travel plans, the life they left at home, and an old Argentinian man eating rice and beans talking about how a person shouldn't travel quickly, should stay in one new spot for a few months to feel the culture, immerse oneself in the essence of the people making up the community. I told him about my travels, traveling to over a dozen countries in three months. What kind of travel did that teach? His head shook side to side slowly in disgust. That is no way to travel fully. That thought rang out through my head as I laid in bed that night with the spins. When traveling hostels, the introductory statements go as follows. Where are you from? Where have you been? Where are you going? According to the old Argentinian man, it doesn't matter. We are all on a journey somewhere and have started from an ambiguous place. Travel is just the act of getting from one ambiguous state of being to the other. What matters is the in-between, the journey, the part where stories are made, but according to him, the most important stories are the ones gained by holding fast and digging deep beneath the surface level. The past three days travel have been fast, ridiculously fast, three different countries in three days fast, and I was to be heading back to Austria the following morning. My eyes opened in the pitch black of the room, everyone snoring around me as the Argentinian man's words rang through me, rattling every inch of consciousness I could muster. What if he was right? End of chapter.